Lagos State's Emergency Management Agency, LASEMA, was established by Law 16 of 2008. This was in pursuance to Decree 12 of 1999 as amended by Act 50 of 1999, which established the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. By its establishment, LASEMA is statutorily charged with the responsibility to respond in promptly and adequately to disaster situation and sustain such interventions in any form of emergency in the state. Also, LASEMA coordinates the activities and ensures adequate collaboration amongst relevant stakeholders, collects data, and serve as database for effective planning on emergency or disaster situation in the state, among other functions. The agency has been discharging these responsibilities efficiently since its establishment. At inception, one of Governor Akiwumi Ambode's administration's promises was continuous reform in the public service. The reforms are expected to strengthen the civil service and made it respond to the needs of all citizens in the same manner quality services are rendered in the private sector. On our program, State and Focus tonight, our satellite is beamed on La Sema and the agency's plan for managing emergencies in conformity with the new direction being advocated by the Ambody administration. For every administration or tenure, there is usually you know, the plan, the vision for such a person you know, that is bringing it to the table. The question is, what is your vision for this agency? Before now, we used to have the local emergency management committee in the 57 local council areas and LCDs which needs to be overhauled, particularly because of change in batting at local government levels. So there's a need for us to restructure and re-engineer the effectiveness of this local emergency management committee. And this can only be effective if you have a very close operational base to ensure it is not enough just to be a member, but you must be an active and a meaningful member and you must have that passion for safety of life of anybody. So these are the visions we are looking at. So these donor offices will serve as our operational base in the five divisions of the state, of which we will have trained and experienced personnel that will be able to coordinate these local emergency responders and to also achieve this. The agency has presented this to, to the state ESCO, of which we have gotten an approval in principle to uh, bring in at least 50 emergency management volunteers in every local government of this state come 2016. And it goes further that we also train them, particularly in some elementary needs of how do I assist which we call the first aid, basic life support programs, and any needed knowledge that they will use to uh, support and complement the efforts of the local emergency responders and the main first responders in the state. Now, outside of this, we are also looking at moving a bit further Government cannot run emergency expenses alone. So we are also looking at against next year and years to come to have a very solid partnership with international firms, companies, and organizations that will have seen the effect of the state government that there is a remarkable improvement in the response time and attention to ensure we have a safe environment. And then, the issue of equipment is also germane. Because that's one thing to have an experience. All these volunteers, all these uh, local university committee members, we are going to kit them. We are going to equip them. More so, even our trained officials, they need to go further to some specialized training, particularly in the area of search and rescue 
We all know the menace and the problems we have when we have building collapse. The hands we have are there, but they are not yet enough. So we are arranging that in due course, we also train them in this particular area, which is a very sensitive and very important area, if truly we want to get there. So these are part of the things that we are looking at. And our own activity as an agency involves around the exigency of happiness in our environment. Because even before now, there have been so many activities that you are going, and particularly, we will further synthesize and improve on our advocacy to ensure we have safety environment in the state. How far have you gone, you know, in putting these strategies in place? You've mentioned about a proper principle, you know, for the volunteers. Yeah. What about the the zonal offices? What about all the plans? How far have you gone with this one? I can say this authoritatively that these are part of what is Excellency the Governor. Mr. King Nambodi has assured us and has approved for the establishment of the zonal offices. That means these areas have been taken care of in the budget preparations for 2016. It is a holistic approach of which we have gotten a go ahead from His Excellency. And let me use the opportunity to please appreciate his concern to ensure that the Goshen's life are kept within. To be environment. One thing that is quite important when it comes to emergency management is that, is that there must be a plan yeah. for every individual involved, you know, to get involved in emergency response. The question, sir, is does this state have an emergency response plan? And it does. How effective is the plan? A local state government adds a command and control chain in all emergencies and disaster in this state. Now, it depends on the kind of emergency or disaster that we have. Like, I have it here, we have a chain of command. My humble self, as general manager of the agency, is the incident command commander of any, any emergency or disaster in the state. And we have classifications of stakeholders involved in these activities. We have what we call the first responders that you often see here and there. The Lagos State Fire Service, the Lagos State Building and Control Agency, the Rapid Response Squad, the Lagos State Ambulance Service, the LASMA, and the Nigerian Civil Defense Corps, and other volunteers that supports our cause at every point in time. So there is a chain of command. Let me give you a scenario of, of the Bristol helicopter crash. Immediately, we got the distress call on the tow free line, 767-112. At this junction, let me further advise and educate negotiations. That that number 767 and 112 is realistic, is functional, and it is reliable. It depends on how soon you call us that will determine what do we do. The moment we receive the 767, the first thing is what kind of emergency are we managing? Once it was a helicopter, we activated all necessary responders from Nigerian Air Force, uh, Nigerian Navy, the local state uh, authority, the last man is there, last one is there, civil defense, the Nigerian police, the IRS. Because when you manage an emergency, it goes beyond just attending to. You must have one, access. You must have unhindered preference to do the thing. And you must do it right. That area of Oyoshoki, we had the local divers that are working with the agency and Ministry of Health over the years. So that there are some of our local emergency committee members living in Oyoshoki also quickly mobilized people in. And the local divers were at the seashore doing their dredging. So and as 
get all the message they are working. We are, we are trying uh, to coordinate, escalate. Mama came in, Nigerian police, the Air Force, and even the Respecter, because it was a serious emergency situation. A similar scenario, a collapsed building. I don't need an Air Force man at a collapsed building. But at every point in time, I need my fire service men and their trucks. I need my Los Angeles officials. I need trained and skilled officers of the agency that works 24 hourly. We want a 24 hour emergency management and coordination program in this agency. Hence, the improved level of our performance. But however, we believe we are not there yet. But we will further continue to improve that we get there. So there is, there is a chain of command here. But we have some people that commonly, like, for instance, this is the, when the call comes in to the call center, immediately they, they escalate from the console. We call it console. It's, it's a system program. It's not a one-man show or when you call, you call like in the or the GM. We have over 45 young Nigerians working on shift 24 hourly uninterrupted and arguably in the day we receive calls of over a thousand so it's a system networking so it did not be, and as they are sending the message to Lassema the agency who is the community agency at the same time we have representatives of all these first responders at the command control center so if, if it is a matter of security we have a, we have an office there officers on the desk from IRS. We are from the Noble Watch. We are from LASMA. We are from the Fire Service. And just like that. So it is a synergy activity. That is why we've been able to go this far. Talking about all these emergencies that you have attended to mm. in the course of time, sir. Yeah. What lessons would you say you've learned from their management? Some of the lessons I have learned is that I can see that Lagosians are beginning to appreciate the worth of lives and the loss of properties. Unlike before, that they do attack emergency responders. Because of the improved state of activities of all responders, that doesn't happen again. The issue of beating fire service men, throwing so that all this are stopped. That is number one. Number two, the voluntary participation of some organizations like the Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, the, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they have their reflexes that at any point in time you have a major incident. Like you can tell me witness this would be like incidences so far. They've been there to, to assist the managers to ensure we have a free place by cordoning off, supporting the national defense the police and the, road, the federal road safety corps too. They were so wonderful. I must commend them. We are all working together as a one unified team because we all have only one goal, to save a life and to ensure properties are not lost. I commend everybody. So this, this, so this kind of lessons I have seen that if people see that you are coming up with some good tidings, the Gretchens will support you. However, there are some that are giving us problems. Fake calls. We call it old calls here. So I appeal to them to stop wasting the, the funds of the state the taxpayers' money. In many of tanker drivers in the United States, uh, we've had a tanker related emergency, almost about four. Now, one at Yanapaja, another one in the, at Gimo, then two at the Yoleta. This kind of describe the uh, tankers as emergency triggers. What exactly are you doing, sir, to manage tanker related emergencies in the states? I can assure the Gaussians that I speak that all those reactions is in top gear to ensure we reduce this menace of tankers and containers falling on the streets of Lagos. But let me say clean clear that most of these incidences is as a result of unclear attitude, particularly on 
with reference to the drivers, most of them are reckless. Outside of this, the status of these vehicles calls for concern. And His Excellency has appealed and has given directives that even owners of these trucks and tankers or three vehicles that continues to flout the laws of the land will be held responsible and will be prosecuted accordingly. These are the steps. But there's a way forward. If the associations of these tanker drivers for once can educate their membership on appreciating the world of life, looking back at the losses they have created, they have caused in the state, affecting the economic activities of the state, properties, and lives. How would you feel if it had been you that is affected because of somebody else's carelessness? So it borders on the attitude of our people. And it goes around every sector. The moment everybody appreciates what life is all about and to preserve life, that it is even ungodly and it's punishable for any life to be lost out of carelessness from anybody. I believe we all change positively. We are in, in the Namata season now. And of course, you know, unlike before, the Amatang came quite early and it's blazing. Yeah. The question is, what safety precautions do you have for people? We have continued to sensitize our people on the dangers we are in, particularly at this festive period. The use of fireworks, the condition of our vehicles, and the mode of driving on our highways, particularly at this season. So we are here and there to ensure that people, but there's no thing for you to advocate and exercise. There's another thing for you for the person you are addressing to appreciate the worth of what we are saying. However, the agency and all responders have put all their plans. Like, as, as I speak with you, it is a message to negotiations that we are having this easy period for the environment between now and February. Let us be sure that all vehicles on the roads now are in good condition. Those of us that want to make sure we beat the third mainland bridge traffic by leaving room by 4.30 should appreciate the impending hazards they are in. You can drive at the end of the day, provided you are cautious and you put on necessary precautions. Anybody driving in the early hours of the day on the street of Lagos or in Nigeria on late hours should please use beam light. No overspeeding. Ensure your wiper is working. Obey all traffic rules and respect officials on the roads. We have started this advocacy as a session in the last three months now, particularly concerning fire. Fire kills. We have been here and there. We have it in English, we have it in Yoruba, we have it in Pidgin. We run jingles on television stations and radio stations day in, day out. That this period that we are, particularly we have too many things that get dry. So what, what is important for us is to be cautious and be careful. The moment we are, we are careful and we try to observe our areas and ensure things are done properly. These are our preparations for this Amatan period. You did mention one of the challenges that you, you, you do face in this kind of responsibility. Uh, of course, it's also changing, and that is the attitude of people, people attacking an emergency response. Uh, the question is uh, is that the only challenge that you face? If, if there's no, what are the other challenges? That you face. The other challenge is this issue of traffic congestion. 
and some individuals not, not wanting to give all responders the right of way. But I must admit that there is a level of improvement, but it is still not enough. Please, the moment you see a fire fighting truck on emergency, the moment you see a Lassan bus, a Lassema vehicle, a Nama vehicle, a single defense vehicle, sure, you allow a rapid response squad vehicle. The moment we have right of way, and then there's another issue that must be addressed at this junction. Those that have kept unmovable vehicles on our streets in Lagos, called abandoned vehicles, must move them as a matter of urgency. These are some of the hindrances that we have. Abandoned vehicles here and there. So, as of that, Another challenge that we have is not calling the 767 or 112 on time. We want to try our best. When our best fails, sometimes we need to remember to call 767 or 112 again. It could be a passerby that will just call. By the time, because part of our feedback mechanism is that when a call comes, if it's a fire service, if it's a fire incident, as the fire trucks are moving, our officials at the control center will call the caller to assess, are we there? Sometimes it may, it may be a passerby. And most times, they will not be calls again to give us the accurate position of things. But however, there is a remarkable improvement in all this. And like I've said earlier, if all will be a border skipper by informing us even of impending dangers, do not wait until a building collapse. What do you have to say to the Gaussians out there? You know, what word of advice do you have for them? What words of encouragement do you have for them? Of course, here yes, you've spoken about not being full at home. Yes, we're talking about not yielding the, the way you know, for emergency responders. Overall. What role do you think the Gaussians have to play you know, in, ensure, in ensuring safety you know, in the state? If we all as individuals, as a family, as a corporate entity, as a company, as a community, can imbibe towards a good attitude to prevention of losses of lives and properties, it will take us a long way and bring us to that next level that we are all looking towards in Lagos. In the course of the interview also, that this job is a collective effort. You you, you relate with police, the police, you relate with the last man, you relate the, the tax force. How supportive are these agencies in bringing your career to responsibility? Lassema is here, Lassema is there. It is not only Lassema. It is all emergency responders in the state. They have been so, they have been so, we are all coordinated. They are not supporting me. It is all our, we all have stake in this. I appreciate their response, concern, attitude. And I will still appeal that we are not there yet. We need to further synergize, sit down, brainstorm, to ensure that Itesiwaju, Epileko, Nijewalibu must come to bear in all ramifications, and it has to start from a safe environment when we can beat our chest that there is adequate and proper safety of lots of property, which starts from the saying that uh, knowledge is power and safety is imminent. It's supposed to have an environment in Lagos State that is disaster free, that is crisis free. We can have an environment in Lagos State that will be disaster free, 
but cannot be emergency free because of the status they are in and because of so many activities and the, the cosmopolitan nature of the state. However, the beauty of it is that the level of emergency preparedness to challenges of the state that is same here and there worldwide.